What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of Slinging Lead Live. I am TJ, the Lead Slinging Ginger. Joining me, as always, is my friend and compatriot in the firearms community, Kent Hauer of Green Mountain Defense. Kent, what's going on tonight, buddy? Yo, how you doing? I'm hanging in there, man. It's been a couple weeks. Yeah, it's been a minute. But yeah, uh, when, adulting and stuff. Adulting. You know, what people don't know, though, is that TJ and I do these anyway while I'm driving around and he's in his basement computer personing. We just don't record them for your pleasure. So it's not been a while that we've talked, but it's been a while that we've talked on the interwebs. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. I haven't put on my keyboard commando pants lately. Right. Um, but with that being said, uh, real quick, a couple announcements. First of all, invite you guys to go check out rightonoptics.com. Right on Optics is the choice optics provider, dealer, and manufacturer for the Lead Sling and Ginger channel. I invite you guys to head on over to their website, check them out. They have everything you might need for binoculars, variable power optics, red dots, you name it. They've probably got it. Tell them TJ sent you with code T Ramsey at checkout. Save yourself 15%. That's one five percent off at checkout, you cheapskates. Other announcements? I'm going to NRAM, dude. I'm actually going to go to the NRA annual meeting next next weekend. If you weren't going to bring it up, I was going to. Um, yep. I want your head to be able to fit through the doorway that you have to walk through, but congratulations. I'm proud of you, and you're going to do awesome out there. You're going to make some new connections, and you know, just hopefully when you're Insta-famous, you'll remember the little people. That's all. Of course, man. You know, Whenever you're doing it for the gram, you got to remember your, your peoples, right? That's so... Awesome. Um, question I have got, not just from you, but from some of my, my, you know, friends and family and stuff, you know, they always talk about, you know, TJ, you're so against the NRA. Uh, why are you bothering to go to the annual meeting? Uh, well, for starters, I'm not giving the NRA a dime. Uh, I am going, uh, under my media credentials and as a guest of right on optics. Uh, so you will got, you guys, if you're there, come swing by the booth. I'll be, I'll be hanging out there for a little bit. Uh, Love to shake your hand, get to know you, check out some of Right On's fantastic products. Uh, but with that, I will be meandering around the 15 acres of booths and vendors and tables, uh, just talking to people, hanging out. But the reason I'm going, truth be told, is to interface and interact and build connections and relationships with other like-minded people. Clearly, I'm not going to be the only person there that feels that we, you know the Second Amendment community has been getting the shaft from the NRA for the longest time. So I'm going for the people, right? I'm going. I'm going to make friends and connections, and and maybe collaborate on a few things. But also, I'm hoping to generate some content for you folks at home uh, who maybe won't get a chance to go. So, if there by chance is a manufacturer or a dealer or somebody like that that you might want me to swing by and check out, by all means, post a comment down below. I'll uh, be sure to put it on my list of things to do while I'm there. So, but yeah, man, I, you know, I know you're an NRA member. I, I think what really sucks about the whole thing is that you're not going to get to come. I'm an NRA life member. I know, but you I'm won't like, get to come. Like I won't, we, we won't get to hang out. We, I mean, we won't get to bro down at the NRA annual meeting. Not all of us can be highfalutin representatives <laughs> from new optics companies. Okay. Some of us talk too much shit on the internet. And aren't nearly professional enough for anybody to send us anywhere. I don't know who you've been talking to, but I don't know anything about that whole professional thing. I just do me, and that's how it is. No, dude, you're in all honesty. Um, there's no question why a company like Right On would pick you up and send you places and do that. You're going to represent them very well, and you're going to do what you've always done and represent all of us real well. So I'm proud of you, bro. Thank you, much appreciated, brother. Yeah. Um, so uh, Corey, uh, our dear friend. Uh, from Instagram, Corbeard is going to be uh, meeting me up there. Uh, he and I are going to be palling around up there. Uh, he is also an NRA member and right on pro staffer as well. Uh, so he and I are going to go Dutch on the hotel. Yes, I'm paying my own way, uh, but we're going to go Dutch on the hotel and uh, and pal around uh, and you know hold hands and skip down the aisles. Uh, of I was just going to say, does go Dutch mean you're going to pay for it together, or does it mean you're going to share? Never mind. I mean, he, he's a big dude. I'm sure he provides a, 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 a lot of warmth. It's like the time we used to provide nighttime heat for Lara Flynn Boyle, right? <laughs> <laughs> Peter Griffin, anyone? Yeah, is, is Family Guy outdated? I haven't watched that show in a while. So He flaps his gut up over and lets her crawl in and then he lays yeah. it down. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one that got that. So. Oh, Peter. Anyway. 
Um, you kind of had a pretty big weekend this weekend, didn't you? Oh, dude, I got my ass whooped this weekend on the range. Um, Piss your wife off? <laughs> no, my wife was so happy to get rid of me. But, like, you got to love it when you're married and you say, hey, honey, one of my favorite gun instructors from the interwebs is going to come. And I told him we could have a sleepover if that's okay. <laughs> she, she was like, sure, just, you know, whatever. Do karate in the garage. Build bunk beds. It'll be great. I think uh, it's because your wife's not – not. Uh not unfamiliar with you bringing home strange men. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's that. There is that. No, um, in all seriousness, I had an awesome two days on the range with Scott Jedlinski, AKA Jedi from modern Samurai project. He came down here to Lewis Berry to do his two day red dot pistol course. Um, I shared the range as a host and a student with, uh, 13 other really squared away dudes. Uh, some mill, some former mill, some LE, and uh, some just regular Civ Joes like myself. A lot of good shooters there. Um, just a quick shout out to Mark, who rocked it out and got the black belt patch while we were all there. He hit some killer standards. He had a great day, and he's been working for that forever. So uh, congratulations to him. He's a hell of a shooter. But, yeah, we had an awesome time out there. Um we're gonna do an AAR for y'all. We won't we won't spoil it tonight with it. I'm gonna try to get Scott involved. So uh, look for that here coming soon. But yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'd love to get a chance to pick his brain. And maybe next time I won't be such a cheapskate and get my ass up there and I'll take the class with you. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah. So yeah. so with without spoiling the AAR, so the topic of tonight's discussion is what did we learn? So th those that aren't familiar with the connotation, uh, whenever somebody usually hurts themselves, like my children, <laughs> I like to look them square in the eye and go, well, what did we learn? So uh, since you spent all weekend at the range, Kent, what did we learn? So I won't spoil the, I, I won't spoil the AAR. And also in keeping with the way I normally do AARs on the interwebs, like, Take the class, guys. 450 bucks. If you get a chance, go train with Scott. Awesome training. Um, yeah, wait. You, just, you said 450 for the whole two-day class? Yes. Oh, dude, that's fantastic. Good luck finding – guys, for those that don't know, uh, you know, maybe for some of you that are maybe beginner shooters or haven't really taken some advanced training uh, or even just professional training at, you know, throughout your, your shooting career and lifestyle um, – 450 bucks for a two day class from someone like Scott Jedlinski. That is a steal. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. But anyway, so yeah, without spoiling the AAR, okay. Um, so maybe not even from the class, but you go to the range a lot more than I do. So, from recent range visits, what are some valuable lessons you've learned? So, I'll give you, I'll give you a few from the weekend. One, one being Scott really focuses on, um, and, you know, direct quote from him, right? I'm not making any of this up myself. God knows I didn't come up with it. Uh, the body works the way the body works. So he spends a lot of time explaining why certain physical positions and certain physical changes to anything from your stance to your grip to the way you grip your shirt and clear a cover garment. He's really big on the little things. He's, little, he's really big on diagnostics for individual shooters and explaining why sometimes what we end up doing is too much work when it could have just been done simpler and easier and more efficiently. So he's all about efficiency. He's all about um, making sure that you understand the why of behind any drill or any concept or anything like that. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, it was not the, like face shooter 500 deal where we went through 1500 rounds of ammo. That wasn't it. Um, but it was a lot of very specific diagnostic learning. And um, he was, he takes it very seriously. He does a good job. So yeah, look forward to a better AAR, but man, it was a great weekend. Other stuff I've learned on the range recently. Let's see. Fat man can't run in mud. Uh, I sprained my. That's a Confucius saying, if I remember yeah, correctly. Fat man, no run in mud. I, I sprained my fat roll. It, it hurts. Um, I learned more about the Red Dot Zero this weekend 
than I originally knew, and I, I learned some stuff I thought I knew. So there's that. Um, as far as as far as uh, range stuff, not having to do with uh, the weekend, I've been shooting a lot of shotgun. I've been shooting a lot of clays, um, and I'm learning that uh, shooting is shooting sometimes, and regardless of the discipline or the tool, there's a lot more crossover than you would think. So I'm having some fun with that. So there, there's a few things I've learned. What do yeah, you got? So, uh, so my membership for Strategic Edge finally came through. Uh, nice. So I went, yep, yep, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, I was on the waiting list for, for about a year. Uh, so finally got through, uh, went to my orientation, and decided to take the opportunity that while I was going to be there for orientation, uh, you know, get some trigger time in. Anytime you can get behind the gun is a good time, right? So met up with a couple friends uh, up there at the range that I've gone to that range with before. And I decided to bring a couple of our, our drills with a, with me. You know, the, some of the drills that we talked about a couple episodes ago. Uh, so specifically, I did the Bear Solutions drill and also the Tier 1 Concealed Triple 7 drill. And boy, let me tell you something. That, that Tier 1 Concealed di- drill is no joke. So... I'd invite you guys to go check it out. It is available on Tier 1 Concealed's website. Uh, They are the makers of fine holsters such as the Axis Slim. This is my appendix rig that I carry. Uh, They have a drill that is meant to be fired uh, from concealment. So you draw uh, on the buzzer. uh, Draw. There there are only four circles on the target. Top left is a one-inch circle. Top right is a two-inch circle. Bottom left is a three inch circle and bottom right is another one inch circle. So real simple, top two circles, draw one round in the one inch, two rounds in the two inch, slide lock reload, three rounds in the three inch and another single round in the remaining one inch circle. Seems easy. (laughs) Uh, It's also done from uh, seven yards and yeah, let me tell you something. I have got to work on my trigger, my trigger press. And I think probably the most valuable lesson that I learned this weekend was mechanical offset with, and for the internet Nazis out there, clear gun, uh, the mechanical offset. You see that I just pinched my damn finger in the, between the slide, the muzzle. Um, but the mechanical offset of the red dot, it applies. It's a thing. Now my red dot is zeroed at 10 yards. As we've discussed, and at seven yards, when I took the shot at that one inch circle, I was about an inch low. Now, yep. I know I'm not that bad of a shot, <laughs> but I was not expected. So I'm very familiar with rifle optics. I mean, yeah, or, you know, carbine optics, the mechanical offset on a carbine. Typically, when you zero at like 50 yards, the, I mean, you're engaging those targets with a, with a carbine or a rifle caliber, not necessarily at seven yards per se, but like the mechanical offset on a rifle is much more apparent and you're much more aware of it. There is not a, at least apparently, there does not seem to be a huge mechanical offset between the, the bore line or the bore axis of this firearm and the red dot. It's just like this, if this were sitting up on a high rise like it would on a rifle, Makes complete sense. Was not expecting it to be that far off on a pistol. So mechanical offset, it's a thing, especially in pistols. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so uh, now that I've identified the issue that I was having, uh, my, my lack of understanding, uh, I can address it going forward, right? So yeah. the next time I try this drill, <laughs> suffice it to say, I butchered that drill. Like uh, I... I I was jacked up like a football bat. I just wasn't wasn't doing it well. Um, also, it's meant to be shot cold. Like first thing right off the bat, you do that. You don't get a warm up. You don't take a warm up. You just do it. So yeah, yeah. It was. I ate some crow this weekend. Let's just say that. Now, with that being said, with that being said, I, I will say, um, I picked up a couple more. Uh, lessons, and that was 
picking up my site and acquiring my target on a smaller target. So typically when we go shoot, and I want to add a little bit of context here so the folks at home don't think I'm a, I'm a complete jackass. <clears throat> I come more from a competition shooting background. So when I put like red dots and stuff on my guns, or at least on my pistols, I'm not necessarily looking for hitting that one inch circle at seven yards. I'm looking at hitting, you know, the, the 20 inch wide cardboard target with an A, B, C, and D zone. You know, that's what I'm hoping for. So in competition, there is such a thing as good enough. And that is where, and we've talked about training scars before. I really picked up a training scar with that and thinking that, you know, once my site was zeroed, I was good, you know, 10 yards in and around there. Obviously I knew if I moved way far back, you know, like at 25 yards or whatever, the site was going to be off, obviously, but I wasn't expecting a difference of three yards to be there and picking up, trying to draw down on a one inch circle at that distance. You're not, you, you, you're not acquiring those sites as you, as fast as you think you are. So that actually brings me to a, a question for you, Kent. Sure. Um, what lessons as far, so we talk about the draw, you know, you always see these guys on Instagram and stuff with really fast draws, uh, really fast dry fire. You know, they're really good at drawing that holster and pulling that trigger and making it go click. But when it comes down to drawing and firing on a small target, like a one inch dot, you know, what are some, what are some of the observations you've made about yourself and really just kind of overcoming those obstacles to begin with? How can somebody get better with that? So to be fair, I know that's like six questions, but just kind of. Yeah. Roll <laughs> so a couple of things. Um, and I, and I'm preloading a lot of what I'm about to say with, you know, my very recent experience, but the, the solution is not 10,000 slow and steady reps. That, that is not the solution. Um, and that's, that's another direct quote from Scott. You see, the problem is, is like my mind's so full of all the stuff that we just did this weekend, and it's going to be real hard for me to, to bring up or talk about anything else. But here's what I'm going to say. If you've gotten to the point where your gun's in the same spot every time when it comes out of the holster, and what I mean by that is we're not overdriving with our strong hand, we're not under supporting with our weak hand. We're not fucking it all up somewhere between here and our presentation point. We're not having to fiddle with our grip on our way out. If we've gotten to the point, whatever the time is where gun comes out, comes up, and it is where it needs to be every time to within reason, right? If you're talking a one inch dot at seven yards, you're going to have to do some refinement of that sight picture. I don't really care who you are. Um, especially with a three and a quarter inch dot. I mean, you got to realize that that dot's going to fill up a certain amount of that circle, even if you do get a perfect draw stroke. Oh, oh um, yeah. It, def it definitely filled up most of that. Even at seven, you know, you, yeah. you think three point three and a quarter MOA isn't that large until, no. until yeah. <laughs> you're aiming at a one inch circle from seven yards. <laughs> part of an, another part of what, what um, was really emphasized to me this weekend was not to slow down the entire draw stroke just because I needed to take my time on a site picture when things got narrower or smaller or further away. Um, two thirds of the draw stroke should be the same speed regardless of what you're shooting at. And you right. should modulate closer to the end of your presentation to slow down and to get a more refined site picture. I had that <laughs> nasty little habit of doing the like, slow man draw right and the whole draw was slow as opposed to snap up and then modulate and slow down right. um which is something that if you'd have asked me if i thought i was doing that i would have told you i was until some dude puts a video camera on you and goes what do you think you're doing and he shows you that that's not at all what you're actually doing go figure um mm -hmm. so Getting the clearance of the garment and the acquisition of the grip, whether you're going to go for a full grip or a claw grip or whatever else, getting the gun from wherever it is, whether it's in a duty holster, an appendix holster, or a concealed strong hand, 
um, getting it up to your eye line, that can get done just as quickly, whether you're shooting 25 yards or a one inch circle at seven, the refinement then could come once you have to extend the gun out, then you can modulate and slow down and take some time to set up your sight picture while you're responsibly prepping your trigger so that when it all comes together, it works out correctly. And, you know, I did some work on stuff like that this weekend and candidly when it works great, it works great, but I don't have, I don't have the time in with the change of, of the technique that he gave me to say, I can do it perfectly that way every time. But, right. you know, it certainly, uh, it certainly was eye opening. I'll say that, especially at 25 yards. Yeah, That's absolutely. I, I think again, and I, uh, yes, I'm going to keep pulling this excuse card. I, 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 I attribute a lot of the issues I have to training scars picked up during competition. Because you're not, again, like when you draw, like when that buzzer goes off, you're not drawing to make a precise shot. Right. Now, we could argue back and forth, and there's probably merits to both sides of the argument, that you're not going to be drawing to take a pinpoint precise shot necessarily when there's a threat. Like if you're actually defending yourself, you know, it, it like, you know, cause we have to remember, you know, three to three to four yards, if that handshake distance uh, that, that you're it, that most people find themselves in a self-defense situation. <clears throat> so I, I can understand that, Hey, I'm, I'm trying to hit this from this far away. Uh, not really a need to hit his button, right. Or his zip, the zipper on his, on his jacket. But naturally, we you know we want to improve and get better and be able to make that shot and stop living in the world of good enough, right? Yeah, good enough's good enough so, till it ain't. Yeah, that's that's absolutely yeah. right. So, I, and I I don't think that's fair. I you're blaming it on competition, I think, because that's your previous experience. The training scars. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you right now, dude. I used to put up a freaking silhouette and stand there at seven yards. And if I got the rounds between the belly button and the neckline and between the titties somewhere, anywhere in that area, that was good enough. And I was I was a fucking death-dealing, snake-slaying, panty-dropping son of a bitch. Like, I thought I was awesome. Right. And you know what? Like, I'm sorry, but you're not. If this weekend taught me anything at all, and I knew it before, but there's always some awesome that's awesomer than you're awesome. Like, mm -hmm. so better go get on that level. And you got to be man enough or woman enough to stand there and have that evidence put in front of you. Like, damn, this isn't some Instagram shit. Uh, just, just to Scott's credit, like, I ran the fucking timer. Okay. It's my timer. Mm -hmm. Dude was hitting point eight something from the holster, really concealed, really at seven yards, really in the A zone. That's not bullshit. That's not video editing. That's not flash. I watched it happen. Like, oh no, I've, I know that's absolutely possible. But we're well, talking. Yeah, but again, we're talking A zone versus the A. Sure, sure. You know, exactly. you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, we have to consider it. But if we want to strive to get better, and that's really what the purpose, that's why we even bother to learn lessons. If we didn't want to get better, we wouldn't bother. Yeah, we would be okay with good enough. You know what I mean? Yep. So it, it's, uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep pulling that car where it's training scars and I'm really not as bad of a shot as I think I am. No, dude, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, your, your seven yards low thing, part of that's mechanical offset, and some part of it is that you still don't have your zero as refined as you think you do. Yeah, I, I will say it's a learning curve. Like I said, yeah. there's a, you know, you try to, I guess the, the, the real lesson here is don't think that the red dot is, is, a, is as much of a cheater add-on as people think it is. Dude, it still takes a level of skill and training and practice to get good with it. What now, that being said, I would love to see somebody do that shit with iron sights. You want to talk about a three, three and a quarter MOA covering up the whole one inch dot? I want to see somebody do that stuff with iron sights. Yeah. From seven yards. 
You know, yeah. that's definitely not easy. No, but the thing, the red dot, what the red dot really allows you to do is be target focused when you're shooting yes. and see more. That's what the dot allows you to do. The oh, dot, I saw, I saw plenty. I saw my ass miss time and time again. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Those misses are nice and clear. No, dude, I mean, honestly, people think, people, you know, oh, it's, it's the dot gun or it's this gun or it's that gun or it's this mod or that mod. I watch I mean, some I, awesome I, fucking I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not above blaming the gun. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. But I, I watched some dudes that could run some freaking guns this weekend, and homeboy's like, yo, let me try your shit. Okay, here, here's your shit. Can I try your shit? Yeah. Oh, that motherfucker's still awesome with a gun that's not even a it's not even the same brand. Dude right. grabbed a, dude grabbed a CZP ten after running a Glock 17 and was like, da, 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 da. oh, that's pretty cool. Sweet. Here you go. <laughs> okay. And, and meanwhile, the guy that owns the CZP 10 is looking at it like Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know it could do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So um Let's see. Another lesson I learned is, well, I won't say I learned it, but I, I was reminded of it that all guns can still jam. Mm. <clears throat> so this this little beauty, the, the Glock or the Ginger Special, um, I'll tell you what, when the feed ramp on that barrel, that little shiny part right there isn't so shiny, aluminum case ammo does not like it very much. You could always follow the uh, Kimber Armors manual and polish out their feed ramp, Sonny. That'll fix all your problems. I'm not going to lie. It did see my buffing wheel this weekend after I cleaned it. <laughs> yes. Yes. I I get, I, it's not mirror polish like I've usually done, but uh, it, it's definitely clean. <laughs> Somewhere in the archives of the Firing Line forums, circa 2012, some dude told some other dude to polish the feed ramp because he not couldn't spell not, not, he Not couldn't polish. spell polish. So my man posted a picture of a pierogi. Never forget that. Oh, God. See, now I'm going to challenge you to go through the, the deepest, darkest, nether regions yeah. of the interwebs and find that. Yeah, I need to go find that shit. <laughs> you're you're going to see a Glock stuffed with, like, raviolis and shit. <laughs> um, all right. So what else? What else? What else? Let's see. Yeah, as far as like lessons learned, I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah. So let's let's move on to the next topic. And All this right. one, this 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 one's going to be interesting. Being a firearms instructor yourself, uh, so I'm going to ask you before I ask this question <laughs> to take off your "I'm an instructor" hat for a second. Think of it like regular Joe Blow, not so awesome Kent. Howard. There you go. Dear Christ, please put it back on. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I should have done so, that. Uh, anyway, so the question is, and I've seen this. This has been across the Internet all over the place. Uh, and that is, does military and or law enforcement experience qualify someone to be an instructor? Specifically in firearms. Wow. So. Caveat up tour. Uh, that means buyer beware in Latin. Yeah. The dude on this side of the screen has no idea what goes on in the military because he weren't there, right? Uh, yourself and many other great men and women who I respect were. And I salute you for that. And I appreciate your service. And I appreciate military. I appreciate cops, all that stuff. Uh, so what I'm about to say is, you know, don't throw your no steppy sneak thin blue blue line shirt at me and get mad. It depends. And it depends on what the person did in the military. If you were a senior tactic and tactics instructor for SEAL Team Negative Five, and your whole job was teaching some motherfuckers some CQB, and that's all you did for 15 years after like you ripped the face off of God and stuff for the military. Well, yeah, that shit qualifies you to be an instructor because you are an instructor. You were. You're literally MOS or whatever y'all call it probably had the word instructor in it. That was probably part of your deal. So, sure. Dudes in the military also teach, I'm given to understand, all kinds of things. 
guys mm-hmm. get taught how to fix tanks and how to fly planes and how to cook food and how to, how to, how to. Guys and girls get taught all kinds of things. So prior teaching experience is certainly a leg up and a benefit when it comes to human and adult interaction and learning. I think that's absolutely correct. What I don't think is that just because you were a pick an MOS in pick a unit for pick an amount of time, you're automatically a firearms expert, certainly not automatically a, a handgun expert because every serious meat eater motherfucker, every dude I've ever talked to, every guy I've ever known who was in the military or a girl will tell you flat out that they shot their pistols considerably less than you or I do on the weekends for fun. And if the gun came out, if, if the handgun came out in a use of force encounter, it was because they had made so many fucked up choices prior that their day had gotten that bad. And it was one step above, you know, stabbing a motherfucker or some shit. Right. right. So I, I don't think it automatically makes you a handgun expert. Candidly, even law enforcement, at least in, in that circle, their primary tool as far as as far as a firearm goes is a handgun. But the thing that the thing that people miss about this that they they hear you say this and they think it's disrespectful, but I'm gonna say it like this. If you are, even if you're SF, even if you're a Delta SEAL Ranger, whatever else you are. Those dudes have to be experts, and I mean experts, at all kinds of shit. That guy's got to be a linguistics expert. He's got to be a land navigation expert. He's got to be a political expert. He's got to know everything about where he's going and who he's talking to. He's got to know the tribal history from fucking 50 years worth of what's going on over there. He's got to know how to run that radio. He's got to know how to work on their equipment that goes down. Those dudes have to be spun up and awesome at so many different things. I get to choose my time the way I want it to, and I choose to spend all my time having fun shooting pistols. So, yeah, I'm going to get fucking good at it. And uh, candidly, they would too if they went out and put that much effort into just the pistol or just the rifle, but they don't have that luxury. So, no, I don't think that military experience without some further background um, just automatically ad hoc would qualify somebody to be a firearms instructor, nor do I think an NRA cert ad hoc automatically qualifies a dude to be a firearms instructor. I think, you know, there's a lot of time to be put in on range as a student first before you could ever consider yourself a teacher. And in many ways I've grown a lot and in many ways I'm still in my infancy. So yeah, I take it seriously and I really, I get frustrated when folks, their first or third question they ask me when they're talking about taking a class is like, well, where, what, what did you do in the military? Dude, I'm the before picture for the goddamn infomercial on weight loss shit. I, I didn't do nothing in the military. What, what kind of, you know, are you, you see who you're talking to here? Yeah, I was, I was in the freaking Nanook of the North military. I wrestled polar bears. Like, stop it. Give me a break. No. All right. I, no, I wasn't I, in the military and, and I love you for having been there and I got family and friends and y'all are awesome people, but I don't know. I just, that doesn't automatically qualify for anything. No, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. And of course your appreciation is always appreciated. Um, but let me tell you, I'm going to let you in on a little insider information. Being in the military, you know what it taught me about guns? It taught me how to shoot my M16 and shoot it good enough. Right. The stuff that people are trying to learn nowadays, or at least there is a greater emphasis on learning nowadays in the civilian community. The stuff that they're trying to learn how to do far exceeds the stuff that they teach in the military, at least at a basic level. Right. Yeah. So me being in the military, that gives me a level of, and I think you hit on a valid point when we were talking about this, earlier before we went live uh, that even I myself did not consider. And that is it gave me a solid background on being able to take charge of a situation, all the professional development stuff. Right. So sure. I get up and talk to a group of people, convey 
cogent information in a very uh, clear and uh, easily digestible manner. So it, it honed the instructor aspect or the teaching aspect of being sure. an instructor. What it did not teach me, though, is the practical application of firearms employment. <laughs> right. right. So which is what everybody wants to know. So, uh, yeah. So it did. I didn't pick up. I didn't really get super injured. And I grew up around guns. Shot them all the time. You know, yeah, had my first gun when I was like six or seven. Uh, you know, started with BB guns, worked my way up from there, so on and so forth, as the story for most of us country boys goes. But I wouldn't say that I got as involved in the firearms industry and community until I actually left the military, believe it or not. One of my first jobs as a civilian post-military was at a gun store and range. And that and hanging out in the community is where I really started to pick up a fascination with it. And then, you know, fast forward to today, you know, competition, so on and so forth, self-improvement, being able to identify the weaknesses and failure points of my own um, has led me to being able to diagnose and assist other people with getting better on their own. But even today, I wouldn't consider myself an instructor. Uh, but yeah, I, I think what I think what bothers me the most uh, and the reason I bring up that question is because there seems to be a trend and it's uh, I would I would venture to say that it's a minority, but I still think it deserves to be addressed and why I asked the question to begin with, because I don't want to see this become a majority thing. Nip it in the bud, so to speak. Mm. If if you have, you know, John Q and Jane Q civilian wanting to seek quality firearms instruction privately. If I, I think there are a lot of qualified and very good instructors who do not have military experience that will be bypassed or looked over simply because they were not in the military. The sad thing is, is most of the people seeking that instruction who say, hey, what's your military and law enforcement experience? Oh, uh, well, I, I wasn't in the military. They don't even have the common courtesies. To, if they came across someone that said I was in the military, yeah, I'm in the military, or I was. They probably don't even have the common courtesy or the, the foresight to say, okay, well, what did you do? So to your point, yeah, you might have been in the military, but are we dealing with a cook or are we dealing with that special forces, Delta Ranger, sniper, ninja, snake eating badass? Well, it's interesting, right? Because, and, and again, I, I almost hesitate to talk about this stuff in public, right? Because I don't know what I don't know. I know you're like, for example. Oh, only, you too. You too, huh? Right. Right. <laughs> I, so I know what you've told me, for example, I'll use you as the example because you're the guy I'm talking to instead of talking about a third party who's not here to correct me, should I say something or I. So your MOS when you were in was not snake eating Delta Seal Ranger guy. Nope. nope. Was, for, the for the record, I was military intelligence. I was a pogue. Sure. But to yet. Intense power. But yet you saw combat. I did. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 right. But you say that like, like, yeah, I did. Like that's part of the job and, and whatever. And I'm not trying to like bring war stories out of you or whatever, but bro, the only combat I've ever seen was on a judo mat or in a high school playground. Okay. So I don't take lightly the fact that those people, whether they were the truck driver or the mechanic or the whoever probably saw some shit that I'll never have experienced. But at the same time, I've I've done things in life that I have no business trying to teach anybody. I, I just I just rode my bike a couple miles tonight to try to be less fat. I have no business teaching nobody how to ride no bike. Just because you've done it once or twice doesn't mean you have the, the business to try to to try to put out a shingle and say, Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you how to ride a bike. Like, it's just it's not the same thing as having delved into a topic to a level of to the level that you or I do about pistol shooting where we talk you and I can have an hour and a half long conversation about pistol shooting and talk about where the fuck we put our pinky 
and get excited, right? Yeah. That happened today, folks. Yeah. Well, Look, it, like it was yesterday, I think, actually. But uh, right. <laughs> who's right. counting? <laughs> yeah. But but what I'm saying is like people, if you haven't gotten to that level in this where you're thinking that in far in depth, man, I don't know. I just I so, don't know what you're offering people. And you got to well, be a good communicator. There's plenty. I know I know personally uh, one individual who I'm thinking of who is a fucking snake eating badass motherfucker who's a personal person in my life who would probably not be an awesome communicator or teacher. He's a been there done that dude for sure, right? But his level of education to the masses, to public, his ability to communicate to 15 strangers for 16 hours is probably not what you want to pay hundreds of dollars for. Right. And so you know, I think I think the I think the bottom line here is that are there aspects of an instructor having that military or combat experience that adds to the value that they may be able to provide as an instructor. Absolutely. However, the quality and the measure of them being a good instructor is not solely based on just because they can check the block that says veteran, be that Leo or military. There, there are plenty of SF dudes that I, you know, that I know that, you know, they've gone outside the wire a couple dozen hundred times. Probably never fired a shot. Right. right. Sure. Um, I would also argue that the combat that I have seen firsthand, that doesn't even, even that doesn't qualify me as an instructor, mind you, to teach other people how to employ their firearm. Cause I promise you, as soon as that gunshot, those gunshots start going off and you're on the two way range, there's a lot of hiding behind like cover and calling air support and hoping to God that Apache helicopter comes and fires a missile up their ass. You know, there, nobody wants to stand there and go like, the desperado uh with you know a terrorist uh so yeah it, it it the point is people take in the whole situation examine the quality of an instructor based on their ability to be a good instructor and convey and pass on the skills and develop your and identify and assist in remediating the shortcomings that you cannot identify yourself that's why like can't Despite my experiences, I would train with you in a heartbeat, buddy. I would gladly throw my money at you and say, all right, bitch, let's go to the range. You know, it's point blank a period. That being said, there are some, op, you know, snake eating badasses out there who build themselves as firearms instructors who I wouldn't give the time of day. Yep. And it's not because of that background. It's because I don't think they're good instructors. <laughs> it's, yeah. But, you I, know, I mean, or may, maybe they're assholes. There's a certain way you've got to talk to people, too. And if you could be the, you could have the golden answer to make me the best shooter on the planet, rivaling Jerry Michalik. If you're going to be an asshole, I don't want to deal with you. Yeah. Well, right. Because, because at the end of the day, people delivering a message to people is no different than sales or marketing or anything else. People need to buy in just as much as they need to, I've, I've been to the classes, right, where the dude just got off the freaking C-130, um, and he's like, pow, 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 and he's the awesomest awesome that ever was awesome, and he shoots like a motherfucker. He goes, all right, y'all, step up to the line. Why don't you do it? And I'm like, you, you've taught me nothing. I have no idea what you just did other than being awesome. Yeah, well, oh, cool, in oh, cool intro, but. Yeah, <laughs> and they're, they're like, he's like, oh, dude. All it is is sights and trigger, bro. Just grip the shit out of that gun. I'm like, no, it's not just sights and trigger because there's sights and there's a trigger, and I can't fucking do what you just did. So rewind and help me. And if if you can't deliver a no, message, it's, it's clear you, you're missing the fundamentals. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just the it's, fundamentals. Si it's sights, trigger, yeah. steroids, and hair gel. Yeah, that's all. Just the fundamentals, baby. Just maybe fundamentals. some Adderall. Maybe some Adderall. <laughs> and then you and then you go over to Asia. And you get an airsoft gun and you do some barrel rolls on a stage and bang, you're the guy. Yeah. Yep. Not Salt talking about all it. over it. I'm not talking about anybody in particular or anything, but you know. yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, 
it just it bothers me when I see good instructors, you know, guys like you, Kent, uh, who, fantastic instructors, and people immediately discount you or don't give due credit uh, without giving you a fair shake. Thanks, you know man. what I mean? Yeah, it's it's complete horseshit. Uh, can I can are, I bring up a topic now? Yeah, go for it. We got like fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah, wrap it up. Let's let's do this, man. The floor is yours, buddy. Four seventeen, two port or single port. Oh, I went with the two port. I know that, but why? We're talking about the man's compensator on his. So yeah, so compensator. Yeah, let's so let's go over the ginger special real quick. Okay, we got do the it. Surefire X three hundred. Uh, we've got the Suarez International Slide that was so graciously provided by Green Mountain Defense. That guy right there. Yep. Yeah. Right, right there. Over there. Oh, there he is right there. Um, but yeah, so uh, Suarez Slide, Trichicot RMR. I have the Ameriglow blacked out suppressor height sights. Very simple, right? And for the compensator, I went with the the agency arms 417 two port now this one had now there are there is a shorter version it's a single port and it comes to about chow uh so the the only reason i chose this port or chose this particular compensator was because of i frankly i wanted the very end of the muzzle whether that be from the muzzle device or from the gun itself in keeping with the purposes of such a device on a ginger special to come out beyond the end of the flashlight. I don't care that this thing reduces recoil, right? Or at least muzzle rise. That's a fringe benefit. And we've discussed that. I think a couple of different times. I want this to keep my flashlight clean because I carry the flashlight for a reason. And anybody who has shot a pistol with, or any gun with a flashlight on the end of it knows that that thing gets dirty as all hell. Mm. Flashlight don't work too good when it's covered in crap. So the, the better you can keep the crap off of it, or the more crap you can keep off of it, the better. So I went with the two port because it sticks out just a little bit past the end of the flashlight and actually does its job. I was concerned that anything shorter, you know, because I think the, the one port actually stops like back here with this little uh, ramp part is. Mm -hmm. I was concerned that anything being behind the point of the lens, it would still have something coming out of the, the front of it and rolling down and still defeating the purpose of having the cop in the first place, which is, again, keeping the light clean. So, I thought it yeah. was Instagram. I thought the reason to have the comp was Instagram. It's not the reason. No. Oh, that's that's why I wear the bikini. Oh, yes. So if uh, this video gets four thousand shares, TJ will take his shirt off. I don't think anybody wants to see that. They'll probably do four thousand shares to not. Do <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. You know. You know. Kitty's over there hitting share, 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 share. Yeah. It was set up a botnet and just have a bunch of just hijack a bunch of people's computers and have it do it automatically. Um, can you do does that? It, you does can. it count if I, I could? Um, does it count if I does it count if I share it myself four hundred times? <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's get weird. Why not? Let's do that. That's that's what we've degraded the show into. So what you're <laughs> telling me is you could set up a like fake program and get me like twenty thousand more subscribers. Well, I mean. According to all the uh, messages I get on Instagram, you could do that for as little as four ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and then you and then you give the terrorist your credit card number, and then they win. No, actually, no. Let's talk about. Uh, so I want to talk. So since we do talk about self defense and protecting ourselves, I do want to talk about a particular uh, company that I use whenever I am making a purchase online. Uh, and I don't want to give my credit card over that website. Uh, I, I'm not sponsored by them at all. Truth be told, I found this website while I was looking for something else. And my, my, my teammates and I were... Uh, so bottom line is we wanted to... For those that don't know, I'm an IT security guy, right? 
So we had to pay for a particular service to access a database. Okay. Well, the people that run this database seemed kind of shady. Mm. And let, bottom Were they line is dark many, web NRA operatives. No, but they accepted Bitcoin as the primary form of payment. And in my experience, most people that accept cryptocurrency as the main form of payment are probably not people you want to give your credit card to. They ain't got uh, no 1099. Yeah, no, no shit. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, um, privacy.com hmm. is the name of the website. Privacy.com acts kind of like PayPal in that it is an intermediary between the merchant and your bank. The difference between privacy.com and services like PayPal is you can generate a one-time use temporary credit card or debit card number with expiration date, with a uh, with a CVV number, and make your purchase with that card. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It, it, there's also a cell phone app you can get for it. I've used it a couple of different times. Uh, yeah, it's... It's important to protect your bank account, people. I mean, until you know, privacy.com gets hacked. Yeah, well, but still, even if they do, they can't get into like you they can't get to your bank through it. Like the only connection is the money that you dictate to put in. Right? Hmm. So yeah, it's it it's much safer than giving them your credit card information. Interesting. <laughs> I'd much rather take the risk of privacy.com getting hacked and giving some uh, nefarious individuals uh, my credit card information. So, uh, food for thought. It's a uh, little, there's your little tech tip for the week, folks. We should do a, we should really do a tech episode. I'm all about it, man. I, I'm all tech about doing cy- like cybersecurity. Like, yeah. that, I mean, sure. I mean, that's what I do 40 hours a week at a minimum. I'd, I'd love in my spare time to have that conversation on my <laughs> yeah. YouTube channel. All right. No, All right. no, no, no. Here's, the, no. here's the thing. Truth be told, I have always had an interest and am always happy to talk to people about safety on the internet in their home. You know, we've got a lot of kids nowadays, you know, it's mo- a lot, most kids, uh, you know, 9, 10, 11 years old have smartphones. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it theoretically unadulterated and unfiltered access to the internet. And God knows they're not using it for the intel or for the information. They're using it for cat videos and all that other dumb crap. Um, Thank God but, it's just cat videos. Yeah. Well, and then they got the, the – was it the Momo challenge that was a couple couple weeks ago? I don't even uh, know what that is. We'll talk about it offline. It's creepy okay. as shit. It, it, okay. it'll, it'll give you nightmares. Um, my, my son came home and told me about it because they had an alert at school about it. Like they put out a newsletter. Whoa. I'm like, what the hell? And I'm an IT guy. Like, you would think I would know what that is. And I'm like, what is this Momo Challenge shit? And I looked it up and terrifying. <laughs> I'm Googling this right now. Yeah, I'll let you Google it. You have fun with that. Oh, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, oh, yeah. my God. Okay. Terrifying, right? Um, But anyway. Now. Yeah, it was embedded in that was that there was images of that in videos with that getting embedded in YouTube channels or YouTube videos. Why? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, well, it's a really dark topic, so we'll take that off. We'll take that offline, and I'll explain it to you. Um, but yeah, it, we're, we talk about self defense all the time. You know what? Let's do something that you know not everybody carries a gun every day, unfortunately, um, but everybody uses the internet every day. So maybe there's something we can do to help our. Our, our viewers and subscribers and other people that might stumble across this video on accident uh, better protect themselves and their kids on the internet. So, yeah, I think we could do something like that. That'd be awesome. We really should do that. So, yeah, yeah absolutely, bud. So, well, cool, man. Well, any, any closing comments, any remarks before we uh, part ways? Yeah. Um, that your instructors have a, have a conversation um, with the person that you're about to spend a ton of money with and make sure that their knowledge base and what they're offering to you as a student matches what you need. Um, as much fun, it, like, and look, if you want to, if it's your fun money and that's what you want to do, that's fine. But repelling out of helicopters and taking shoot houses and six man stacks has very fucking little to do 
with protecting you and your family in your everyday life. So for me, I'm prioritizing a lot of those things. Um, I, I, Jesus, I haven't shot a rifle since my last rifle class I was in. I mean, just there's certain, there's certain things that I think sometimes we get a little too far afield with and I wish people would get back to basics that and, uh, you know, hashtag run your gun, not your mouth. Just stop with all the negativity out there. Stop always being the first person to rip somebody apart or take them down and the outrage culture and the industry and all that, you know. If you're not a voice for doing something good for us out here, then just don't be a voice, okay? We, I, I've had about enough negativity for, you know, the next 20 years. But, uh, yeah, train, get out there. There's great dudes. I, I've met 14 great dudes, and there's a person in my backyard. Oh, it's my neighbor chasing his dog. I'm sorry. Excuse me while I just had a moment of like, what the hell was going on out there? Um, it's Momo coming for you, bro. It's yeah, Momo. dude, that was legit. I was like, what in the world? Um, yeah, my boy, my boy got an electric fence out there, and that dog does not give a shit about that electric fence. That you dog's gotta, like, you gotta turn up the intensity. Yeah, that dog's over here, like two thirds of the way in my yard. Like, I don't care about your fence. Um, <laughs> anyway. What was I saying? Oh, just, you know, be a positive influence. Get out and train. I met uh, 14 good dudes this weekend and an awesome instructor. And if you're not getting out there and having those experiences, it's it's on you, man, because the opportunities are here. So that's all I got for you. Very well said, my friend. Very well said. As always, we appreciate having you on the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. If you like what we're doing, be sure to hit that thumbs up. If you think we suck at life, feel free to hit that thumbs down. But feel free, regardless, to comment the comment down below your thoughts, questions, and concerns. We'll be happy to address them maybe on the show here. Or maybe we'll just give you the silent treatment and pretend you don't exist because Kent's not about that negativity. <laughs> uh, with that, folks, please, again, visit rightonoptics.com. Tell them TJ sent you. I'm pretty sure you'll find anything and everything you might need for your optics requirements. Variable power optics, binoculars, red dot scopes, magnifiers, all that fun stuff. Remember, code TRAMSEY will get you 15% at checkout. Links, as always, are in the description down below. So until we see each other again, God bless you all and get out and shoot.